Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another episode of Jared Opens a Box here on Jared Takes the L. And we have a very exciting video today. I've been looking forward to this one for a very long time uh, because we are taking a look at some more Transformers Funko Pops. It's been quite a while, I think, since we've really done a video on Transformers. I think it's probably been since the Rise of the Beasts video last year for the movie. Um, and then, I mean, there were a couple uh, Comic-Con exclusives, but um, this is the first time we've had, you know, an actual wave of Transformers pops since the Rise of the Beasts video, which I think, ironically enough, was also in September of last year, so that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, these ones are actually for the Transformers 40th anniversary. Like I said, there's been a lot of anniversaries this year, and this still isn't even the last one that we're doing. Um, so we have quite a few uh, pops from this wave. There's actually five total. The first two are characters that we have seen plenty of times before, but the other three are completely new to the Transformers wave. Uh, so very excited to take a look at these guys. And I guess we'll go ahead and get started with the first one, a character that we have never seen in Funko Pop form before. I am, of course, referring to Optimus Prime. Okay, so obviously Optimus Prime has had a lot of Funko Pops. Um, it's really no surprise that he would be part of this wave since it is, of course, celebrating the 40 years. And he's easily, easily the most iconic Transformer of them all. Um, so this is still part of the Retro Toys line. He's number 131. Um... The box looks really, really cool. They kind of went all out with this one. It even has this the uh, unique Transformers 40th uh, anniversary logo, um, as well as the little you know G1 illustrations in the back there with all the Transformers fighting each other. Oh, and there's spoilers. There's the rest of the characters you're going to see today. Um, there's the other side of the box. And yeah, let's go ahead and just open this one up. I don't know if this is going to really be all that much different from the other G1 Optimus um, that we've looked at before quite a few years ago. I want to say that was 2021 when we did the original G1 Optimus Prime in that video. But here he is, and yeah, I mean, there's not really too much different about this one compared to the one that we saw before. Um, I do think the blue on this one is a little bit darker because the original G1 Optimus that they made had a much lighter blue than this one. So... I'm not entirely sure why they chose to go with the darker blue, but I personally think it looks really cool. Um, I do like that color on him. The rest of it looks pretty much the same. A lot of great details there on the front of the truck there on his uh, chest. I also have the Autobot symbol, of course, on his arm right over here. He has his little blaster right there. Um, and the rest of it pretty well designed, obviously based on the uh, toy line with the Generation 1 um, figures that they used to come out with. And yeah, this one just looks really, really cool. I like it a lot. Um, there's not too much else to really say about it because we've seen Optimus Prime quite a few times. So, you know, I don't, I don't really have to explain anything to you guys. I'm sure if you know Transformers at all, you probably know Optimus Prime. Um, but this one looks really, really cool. Um, and probably, it's honestly probably better than the first one they made. So that is definitely a plus as well. So there's Optimus Prime. And of course, let's take a look at the other one that we have already seen before. We have Megatron. So very fitting to have a new Optimus and a new Megatron, since again, they're easily the two most iconic Transformers, Megatron being the most iconic Decepticon and Optimus being the most iconic Autobot. But here's Megatron. This is Pop Retro Toys number 132. I think we're actually going to be... No, we're not going in order. I'm just kidding. Almost did. But it's just not going to happen on this show, apparently. There's that. There's that. And there's that. Boxes are all the same. Although, like I said, I do really like the boxes. I think they definitely did a good job. Um, the one thing that they didn't do, which I'm kind of surprised about, if you guys remember on the original Transformers G1 boxes, um, they had... Uh, red for the Autobots and purple if they were a Decepticon. They didn't do that this time around. They just gave them all the red boxes. So, you know, kind of sucks, but it's also not that big of a deal. I just liked the, uh, you know, the added details. All right, so here is Megatron. Right off the bat, I am noticing something kind of interesting. He has this weird... Where the Decepticon logo is, he has this. I don't know what this exactly is supposed to be. It looks like it might be a spring or maybe something 
imprinted on the chest there. I don't know. I really don't know what that's supposed to be. I noticed that when this figure was first revealed, and I don't know why it's there. Maybe it has something to do with one of the old Transformers, you know, Megatron toys. Like, maybe it was some sort of, you know, mechanic that it had. Uh, but he also has his little arm cannon here. It's got purple uh, right there, so looks like he's getting ready to fire it. Um, other than that, the figure itself is pretty similar to the other G1 Megatron that we've had made before. Um, I do love the fact that Megatron has the eyebrows. I, I don't know, that, that, that to me just, I always found to be so goofy, like... Uh, like, out of all the design choices, they, like, he gotta give him eyebrows, and also a nose, too, like, they, they really just gave Megatron all the cool stuff, um, but, yeah, there's Megatron, really, really cool, I like this one a lot, um, you also see the, just a lot of really cool details in there, even got this one right here, um, and even some red right there, so, that's really cool, I like this one a lot, um, again, probably better than the original Megatron pop that we had, so, that one is really, really cool. Now we're getting on to the three characters that we have not seen before in the Transformers wave. So this is going to be really cool. Uh, the first one is an Autobot. The other two are both Decepticons. Um, this one is a bit of a surprise to me. I guess I wasn't expecting to see him, but it is still cool nonetheless. We have Blaster. Um, he's not exactly one of the most popular Autobots, but he's, it's still really cool that we get him. Um, he's Pop Retro Toys number 134. Um, I believe he's kind of like the Autobot version of Soundwave. He has his own little, uh, you know, uh, you know, Soundwave has like laser beak ravage and stuff, little cassettes that would that would come out um, and help him out in battle. I think Blaster was the same way. He even has like you can tell. I think he had um, some Autobot versions, Autobot counterparts of Soundwave's minions. So let's take a look at this one. So there is Blaster. This one looks really, really cool. I do like this one a lot. Um, a lot of really cool details. I will say the... I looked at a picture of Blaster, like, from the show, and looking at the face here. The face does look a little off to me. Um, again, I know these are based off of the actual, like, physical toys of the G1 characters, so that might be why it looks slightly different from his appearance in the cartoon. Um, but, you know... Funko Pops, sometimes it's just not going to translate the greatest, but they still try. Um, the helmet, though, like this this part right here is also pretty accurate, and so is the rest of the body. Um, there's the little uh, piece right here the uh, where the cassettes would come out or, you know, the other mini Autobots and stuff like that. Um, he also, of course, has a blaster. I'm pretty sure they all do. Um, that's just kind of part of the part of the toy thing. And, yeah, this one just looks really, really cool. A lot of great details there. Um... Another great addition to the Autobots. There's still quite a few I would like to see. I think down the line, Ironhide, Ratchet. Um, uh, there's the Cliff Jumper, which I feel like would be super easy because they could just paint him red, call it a day, or paint Bumblebee red, I guess I should say. Um, and that would be super easy. And there's just a bunch of other ones, you know, even Decepticons that I think they could still make. Thundercracker, Skywarp. Um, I think any of those would be really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, this one looks sick. I really like it a lot. And it's great that we're seeing some of the other... I wouldn't say Blaster is an obscure character by any means. Because he's... I mean, he's somewhat popular. He's just not... You know, he's not one that people typically would think about. Um, especially since he's never appeared in any of the modern day movies. So typically people, you know, think of those characters first. Because um, I... Technically, to be honest, I grew up with the the Michael Bay movies and stuff like that, and didn't get into Generation 1 until after I'd seen those movies, because that was my introduction to Transformers. Um, so that's why, you know, some of these characters I wasn't familiar with, especially this next one, although I do know plenty about him now, and I think he's awesome. I mean, the guy literally transforms into a train. It doesn't get any better than that. I am, of course, talking about Astro Train. Um, yes, he literally transforms into a train, and I also... No, no. I'm mixing up. I was going to say, I think he also transforms into a plane, but I'm thinking of um, uh, Blitzwing. Blitzwing's the one that does that. Haven't made him yet either, so again, another one that they could make down the line. Uh, this is Pop Retro Toys number 133. Uh, this one um, is also a Decepticon. I don't know if I said that or not. Probably did. I'm just repeating myself at this point. Um, but yeah, what, a, what an interesting choice, right? Like, 40th anniversary of Transformers. Instead of 
like remaking some of the previous more popular characters they kind of go in and and do some uh different they really do some different characters i think that's awesome that they did that um but yeah let's see what this one's all about it was practically falling out of the plastic <laughs> oh and even the this one's a little banged up actually the blaster is a little uh little crooked there this one took some hits it seems but here's astro train um, again, obviously based on the actual uh, retro toy of him, I think he does look a little bit different in the actual show itself, so uh, that might be why, you know, it looks a little bit different. He has this little red thing up here, I don't know why. He has the yellow visor, kind of similar to what Jazz had, uh, you know, when we did that figure. He even gave him a little mouth, which I think is kind of funny. Um, just like, you know, Megatron and even Blaster, I think, had the same one. Um, then he's got all kinds of little pieces and parts here he's got this right here which made me think of the jet things that kind of look like you know jet wings and maybe he does also transform into a jet or a flying train or something i, I maybe i don't fully remember um i think he does actually because didn't he do that in the original movie the the 1986 movie i thought he did but yeah because even he even has these things back here these little like jet boosters so i feel like he totally did because why would they, because they're like in space, why would you need to have like a normal train? Obviously you would want a flying train, you know, to get from place to place. I'm thinking too much into this one. <laughs> Let me know down below. Is he a flying train? What is Astro Train? Apparently I didn't know as much about him as I thought I did. But nonetheless, this is a really cool one. I like seeing some of these uh, more unique characters. So there he is. And this last one here definitely caught me by surprise. Was not expecting this one in the slightest. Um, especially because it's just, remember when I was talking earlier about Soundwave and Blaster and about how Soundwave, um, with the cassettes where he would like open up his chest and they would fly out and they could transform into these things. Um, and which we actually saw in the, uh, 10 inch Soundwave pop that we did a couple years ago as well. Well, they actually made one of those characters, of course, Laserbeak. Um, and yeah, <laughs> this is kind of funny. It's, it's such a small character. Uh, but they gave him a full-sized box. I thought it was actually going to be one of the sideways boxes. I thought that would have made sense. Um, but no, he got a full-size one, so good for him, I guess. Uh, there's the box right there. And let's go ahead and see what this one looks like. Definitely uh, much different from the others that we reviewed. Okay. It's so tiny. <laughs> there he is. There's Laserbeak. This one's so small. He has the Decepticon logo right on his head. He's got the yellow eyes. You can see the little pieces of the cassette right there on his wings. He also has these little, you know, little guns and stuff, little blasters around his uh, shoulders, I guess. And then he has tiny, tiny little legs right here as well. And that's literally the whole figure. He barely, he doesn't even have a mouth, really. Well, I guess he kind of does right here. I think that's supposed to be kind of a mouth. Because he's supposed to be like a bird, obviously. Laser beak, you know, makes sense. This is such a fun little figure. I like it a lot. It doesn't even look like it should have been a full-sized figure. But it's just it's just so cool. I think they did a great job with this one. And this one also had a chase. Um, it was Buzzsaw, which I believe is another one of Soundwave's. Um, they didn't really change too much on it. I think the wing colors changed and maybe something else. But the, eye, the eyes may have been a little bit different. It wasn't exactly the most creative chase I've ever seen, but I guess, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do. <laughs> but there's uh, Laser Beak. I almost said Buzzsaw. This is not Buzzsaw. This one's Laser Beak, but I wouldn't blame you for mixing them up because I totally would have if you set them side by side. Um, okay, well, time for our reviews. Uh, this is actually a really, really good wave. A lot of really cool characters in this one. Um, probably one of my favorite Transformers videos that we've done because of the variety that we've had in this. Um, I think Laserbeak's hilarious, but it's also really good and actually fairly well detailed. So I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10. Um, actually, I think I'm going to give them all a 9 out of 10 because, again, really well detailed. I always feel like the Transformers ones get a lot of attention from Funko, so uh, that's always a good thing. They're always giving them plenty of details, um, and this is no exception. So another really, really great wave for Transformers, but we'll go through them one more time. Let me know down below which of these is your favorite. Of course, we have Optimus Prime, we have Megatron, we have Blaster, we have Astro Train, and we have Laserbeak. So 
Let me know down below which of these is your favorite when we come back next week. There's only going to be one pop in the video, so it's not going to be nearly as long as this one, but it's a pop I never thought I'd ever be reviewing here on Jared Opens a Box. I really didn't think it was ever going to happen, but it's finally happening next week. You can probably see it up there if you zoom in maybe a little bit, if you can even do that on YouTube, I don't know, but it's going to be awesome. I'm excited. It is a series that we've done here before, but it was just on U2s, so it's the first time ever for Funko, and I cannot wait. So don't forget to check that one out next week, guys. But that is going to do it for now. I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.